Hey everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Economics by Dean Carlin and Jonathan Morduck. We're going to be doing chapter 12, problem number 9. This problem is pretty straightforward. It just says, if adding an additional input does not produce additional output, what is the slope of the production function at this point? So let's think about this. The first thing we need to do is we need to understand or remember what our production function is. We said we can think about a production function either in the short run, when we have some inputs that are fixed and some that are variable, or we can think about a production function in the long run when all of our inputs are actually variable. But let's just to make this easy, let's think about a short run production function. And our short run production function is usually our quantity of output as some function of our variable input or inputs. And what we typically assume in the short run is that in the short run the level of capital is fixed and the amount of labor is variable. So a short run production function would have quantity of output as a function of the units of labor that we're hiring, whether this be number of workers or hours of labor, days of labor, however you want to think about that. And then once you understand this, you would, see, you, you would see just mathematically that a production function as a graph would then have labor on the x-axis, because that's what's going into the function, and quantity of output on the y-axis, because that's what's coming out of the function. And then we said, well, we want to think about a case where adding an additional unit of labor is not actually adding any quantity of output. So that would look something like this here, where you would have, I'll just call it L1, and then call this L2, and L2 is just going to be L1 plus 1. So we've just added one more unit of labor. And then if we were at a particular quantity here, just call this Q1, then if we were able to produce output of quantity Q1 with this quantity L1 of labor, if this additional unit of labor didn't give us any extra output, then it must be the case that the output at this level of labor here is also Q1, right? So we would have something that looks like this. And so our production function obviously would have to go through these two points. So we don't know what else it would look like. We generally think that if there's no labor, there's no output. So generally it starts at the origin. But it could be doing something weird. All we know is that this is going horizontally like this, right? And then it could be doing something like this. Who knows, right? But we're only concerned about these points here. So our question is asking us for the slope of the production function at this point, or in this region, I suppose. So we know mathematically we can say that slope is just rise over run. Sometimes you hear it that way. I'll say change in y over change in x, right? That the change in y would be the rise, the change in x would be the run. And we can use this formula to say, well, what's going on here, right? So we would be calculating the slope between this point and this point, or alternatively between this one and this one. Just make sure that you get the order of the points consistent when you're considering the change in y and the change in x. Otherwise, you'll get the negative of what you were expecting. So we can say here, well, let's say we're going from here to here. So then our change in y would just be q1, because that's where we are with our y-coordinate here, minus q1, because that's also our y-coordinate here. So we'd say, oh, q1 minus q1. Now you can see where I'm going with this. But let's just be complete. And we can say that our change in x is just L2 minus L1. Oops, this should be L1. But you'll notice, just doing this, that this is just 0 over 1, which is 0. So the specific answer to the question is if an additional unit of labor 
doesn't produce any additional output, then the production function must have a slope of zero at that point or in that region. Interestingly enough, we can see actually this slope corresponds to another concept that we learned about. Because here, I could just as easily have said, rather than using y and x, I could say that the slope of the line is the change in q divided by the change in l. So put that way, I would just say a slope is just the change in q divided by the change in l, which, hey, guess what? This is how we defined our marginal product of labor. So we can actually see why our marginal product of labor can be shown by the slope of the production function at any particular point, which is pretty interesting. And if we saw this, we could see directly, well, if that additional person, if that additional unit of labor didn't produce any extra output, then by definition, his marginal product of labor is zero. So the slope of the production function, again, must be zero at that point.